pandemic restrictions, wreaking havoc on global supply chains. We have this much of stock left. We are sorry, it's locked down. Global capacity for air cargo drops by 42% after more than two thirds of passenger planes were grounded. The prices increased close to uh, 30 to 40 percent, and our volume actually dropped close to 60 percent. Since February, over 150,000 shipping containers cancelled just on the Europe Asia route and doubled the number of people globally at risk of going hungry. Ask yourself, what are you doing to create resilience in your supply chain? We have to re rebuild the supply chain uh, coming back into Singapore. Is it worthwhile commercially? Uh, we don't know yet. Managing border closures, price and production risks to keep food on your plate. From Ghana in West Africa to Singapore. A food company in Singapore depends on farmers 11,000 kilometers away for the source of a special ingredient to make their noodles, shakes and soups. The Bambara groundnut. The Bambara groundnut can be harvested two times in a year. So we need to give today our farming communities the, like, the, the volume we are going to ask them to ship about six months in advance, sometimes even one year in advance. The products are mainly sold in Singapore. So we are in our headquarters uh, here in Singapore. This is essentially the heart of our operation. Everything starts from here by us thinking through as to how we go about redesigning food to fulfill our purpose and that is making it nutrient rich rather than calorie dense. Once we have a specification derived of the crops that we want to use, we then reach out to farming communities through our network and through our ecosystem. Once we actually have access to these crops, we then actually start shipping that into our factory in Malaysia, where we actually start producing on large scale. What if Foods created its own supply chains, which worked well until COVID-19 hit? Coming in on short notice, as you guys know, we have a supply chain challenge. And then, every stage was affected. That was a big, big problem for us to actually bring the crops to the border and then actually load it onto a ship and then make it move uh, over to this part of the world. Our buffer stocks were at the location, in the villages per se. So it took us clever rerouting. We had to ship it to Europe and then to Asia, rather than from West Africa straight to Asia. That took us uh, twice as long, or even sometimes thrice as long. And then we run into the circuit breaker, we run into our factory being shut down by the MCO uh, in Malaysia. Then we run into not being able to actually export from Malaysia into Singapore. So there was a huge disruption with regards to our supplies to our customers, particularly in the hotel, restaurant and catering segment uh, here in Singapore. And all of a sudden, we basically said to them, look, hang on guys, we have this much of stock left. We are sorry, it's locked down. What if foods had to take stock quickly? We reacted very, very on mid-March, end of March. We sat down and said, okay, if this is going to hit us badly, how do our cash reserves look like? What about our strategy? What is it that we can realistically fulfill? And that meant for us to basically, as owners of the business, come together and uh, essentially raise capital to not pass on a higher price to consumers. In terms of doing things differently, probably building larger buffer stocks, both for raw materials, packaging materials, as well as finished product. With COVID-19, scenario planning becomes all the more important. Scenario planning is all about looking at what are the potential alternative future outcomes and therefore how companies should really react uh, in accordance to those outcomes and then get, getting quite precise about uh, what do they do with regards to investments, uh, M&A potentially, transformation and all the kind of restrictions that's imposed but also the opportunities that's provided by uh, COVID-19. A wholesale meat importer, Chi Song Foods, was in a better position when COVID-19 struck. Worried about early reports of the virus, they made plans. CS Food has been established for the past 32 years. 
uh, importing meats from all over the world, uh, mainly from USA, South America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, via sea. So um, during the circuit breaker, we have to forecast a lot because for Brazil, for example, we have to buy two months earlier for the shipment to arrive. So during January, we do know that COVID-19 uh, was already very widespread in China. So we had to look forward and plan more just in case uh, globally uh, they really do shut down. But uh, fortunately, they, they didn't shut down. But no amount of planning could prevent what happened next. A 60% drop in business as the restaurants they supplied could only offer takeaways during the circuit breaker. They had to find ways to make up for the losses. So what we did this was to allocate the whole resources to uh, build like things like live, live streamings and uh, group buys to actually increase the business. It was a big change for us because from B to B, our customers usually order in quantities, whereas for B to C, they will have like in tray forms. So more varieties, um, more smaller packs, which also increases my production's uh, capacity also. So they need more time to do the packing. Even the logistics is also different because we usually deliver in trucks and 10 footers and 12 footers, whereas now we have to individually go to homes. So that increases the time to delivery as well. It is uh, really based on our existing resources and they had to work over time. Uh, and now we are actually running on a 24 hour capacity. Another player in Singapore's food supply chain is a logistics company, PLG. They provided storage for Singapore's national stockpile of food during the circuit breaker. This is our frozen storage, temperature minus 20 degrees. We have close to 900 pallets of frozen food, ranges from chicken wing, drumlet, beans and also broccoli. Out of all the food storage, we have close to 50% of them are frozen, delivering to the supermarket. The other 50% of food supplies is stored in their warehouse. This includes 40,000 tons of rice and other dry goods. Most of the food products are coming in by sea. It should last one year to two years. But a big challenge is ahead for PLG, securing the supply chain for a most anticipated product. Is it worthwhile commercially? Uh, we don't know yet. As COVID-19 restrictions ease in Singapore, What If Foods is thinking about resuming a project they planned before the circuit breaker. The development of a plant-based milk from the Bambara groundnut. We have identified a lab process to actually get the product into a plant-based milk. However, we recognize the fact that we are missing the lipids part, so essentially the oil part that makes the, cream, that makes the milk creamy and taste nice as well. However, just as we went into this crisis of COVID-19 and subsequently into the lockdown and the circuit breaker, we found ourselves locked out from possibilities to further conduct trials and uh, collaborations uh, in other parts of the world. A top priority now, finding a partner with R&D facilities in Singapore. What if foods turned to a Swedish oil company, AAK, whose hub for Asia is in Singapore? I think what is missing a little bit is the texture and the mouthfeel, the creaminess of a, of a milk. This uh, plant-based uh, lipid will help you in terms of uh, flavour release, improving the colour and uh, overall mouthfeel. So let us try. We are scaling up now. We went into a pilot scale. So and now we are making actually uh, the plant-based milk in the hundreds of litres. As we now move forward, where we are at right now is that we actually develop a further supply chain uh, into Singapore and we are in early discussions with collaborators to then produce them in massive, big scale. We've been a beneficiary, I think, to some extent in ASEAN. When I say we, I mean ASEAN, in terms of the uh, reconfiguring of the global supply chains, right? So some of that trade flow has come through here. We've seen companies and factories relocating to certain countries, particularly in, in, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia. And I, I, I think Singapore has always been a hub. But to make this new product, 
What do foods have to ensure supplies of raw materials? It took us probably about uh, a month or six weeks before we actually uh, found the right supply chain. We had to re rebuild the supply chain uh, coming back into, uh, into, uh, into Singapore because there were essentially a few businesses that had the license to actually bring in the products into Singapore. 2020 will go down in history as the most costly year. Every supply chain that we have costs us literally two times or three times as much as previously. I will urge companies to think about our resilience of supply chain super important. Most geopolitical uh, scenario planning events tell us that supply chains might break. So therefore ask yourself, what are you doing to create resilience in your supply chain? During the first wave of COVID-19 restrictions, logistics company PLG could not bring in any cargo via air. The situation is improving. Air freight is the most disrupted transportation mode we are running, maybe at 10% capacity. The prices increased close to uh, 30 to 40% and, and our volume actually dropped close to 60%. We used to have 100 shipments per day, now we are experiencing about 60 uh, shipments per day. Uh, and also, a lot of customers chose to move by other mode of transport, such as, such as uh, uh, rail freight, and also sea freight. The jump in air freight prices, however, has helped PLG's warehouse storage business. Lower frequency in air freight uh, create a higher demand in storage. So they, they store more to, to curb the, the, the air freight uh, fast transit and fast frequency demand. The next thing PLG is looking to transport, the world's most anticipated product, a COVID-19 vaccine. In order to maintain vaccines at optimum quality, they're looking to move it by air. So the current option is using insulated boxes with dry ice. These can transport minus uh, 20 degrees. This current uh, option is not robust enough for us to, to transport the vaccine yet. So we are exploring with uh, airlines, uh, this uh, pharmaceutical owner, of how we can achieve minus 80 degrees below zero. Is it worthwhile commercially? Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, a learning curve, uh, I believe we should, we should learn. Uh, if, we, if we learn that, we probably can go into uh, pharmaceutical logistics. Chi Song Foods is hoping to expand its repertoire. The meat wholesaler has been branching out, creating a whole range of new products. So for B2C, currently we are doing retail packs on premium meats, marinated dairies, and also finger foods. But we're going to step up a notch to make it a little um, different. So what we do here is we, have, we will be launching a series of our own in-house recipes um, where we meticulously craft for home users. Restaurant quality dishes like braised lamb shank and douglet confit are in the pipeline. And these, according to Jeffrey, can be whipped up by anyone at home within 10 minutes. This is what it looks like in a frozen state. There's a QR code, we will let them scan, and then basically they can show a short video of how this can be prepared. Existing clients have been helping to test the new offerings. It's 5 a.m., my driver just unloaded our goods. Here with us, we have uh, Shakiras, which is our existing customers. They are a wet market owner, and they serve all the fresh meats, uh, fresh chicken uh, in the market. Right now, CS Foods and Shakira's work very closely together to share with us what they have moved and we will do all the R&Ds to even display what the public actually really wants. We have a section here that is actually for our product that is more ready to eat and ready to cook uh, under our brand. So we work with them very closely to come up with products that they themselves know what will be moving because they are on the ground. We are moving away as not just an importer of meats, but a food solution provider to the home users and to our customers. A recipe for success, mixing technology with opportunity. So we want to move people away from the idea of, hey, frozen good is not a good item.
COVID-19 restrictions have been easing, businesses have been reopening and expanding. Chi Song Foods has opened a central kitchen, hoping to offer a bigger menu of ready-to-eat products. It took a month to get the central kitchen up and running. At the heart of the facility, technology that freezes meat without losing freshness and taste. So welcome to my central kitchen. So for our ready-to-eat products, we do not use any preservatives. We use a technology called cook chill. This is to ensure that there is low bacterial growth. So once this is cooked, we will immediately put it into the flush chiller. So when that happens, when we regenerate from a frozen item to a cooked item, we still get the same taste. So we want to move people away from the idea of a hey, frozen good is not a good item. That's a wrong concept. Home users, when they really try our products, then they realize, hey, actually, there is uh, such solutions available, which has a longer shelf life and really much tasty and also um, healthy. On top of its retail products, Chi Song Foods wants to use its central kitchen to serve its F&B customers. To future proof our business in the B2B aspect. We take over 80% of our customers' kitchen operation. So they do not need to do the cutting, they do not need to do the cooking. We do most of it here. They just need to regenerate and serve. With or without COVID, these are Singapore F&B long-term challenges like manpower and rental problems and trying to scale the business. This kind of kitchen operations right, actually slow down their growth. So what we do here is to customize with our customers um, with all their needs so that instead of focusing the resources in the kitchen operations, they can actually focus it on scaling the business. One year later, we hope to see that we do open retail chains for home users to purchase our products. Right now, we are only starting with uh, e-commerce. As restrictions gradually ease, PLG is trying to strengthen its logistics business outside of Singapore. They're looking to work with train operator Yuxin O in China to provide last-mile deliveries across Europe. This is part of China's One Belt, One Road project, which aims to link Europe to Southeast Asia through land. We don't see there's any holdback. This are uh, Europe and China link. In fact, uh, by next year, this uh, the railway will be travelling from uh, you know Europe via China into Southeast Asia, uh, typically to Lao country. So we are also involving in that. We cannot expect from uh, an, a pandemic, tragic as it might be, to just eliminate globalization. It uh, will have an impact, but it will not uh, destroy the pillars on which globalization rests. If you look at the development uh, in trade, in August, China's foreign exports were almost up 14%. In September, again, 2.8%. So, you know, that doesn't really look as if everything will slow down. Kelvin has also strategically built PLG's headquarters two minutes away from what will be the hub of Singapore's maritime industry. With the Tuas Mega Port ready next year, we are expecting the volume to grow to 65 million TEU, almost double the capacity. And, uh, there will be a lot of uh, demand of uh, additional warehouses space and transportation as well. So this Tuas Mega Port is a breakthrough for Singapore to start handle all these stuff like mega vessels that a lot of shipping lines are building up right now. The immediate vertical that we are going into will be the container yard operation to have it fully automated and uh, cold chain, uh, e-commerce. Uh, this will be the, the focus that we are, we, are, we are going to focus on for the next one or two years. For What If Foods, orders from restaurants are slowly picking back up. Today we are at our collaborator, Mian Restaurant, a fantastic location out in the heartlands of Singapore. And what Chef is going to do, is going to do two, two dishes for us. One is going to use our Moringa noodles. The second dish, that he's going to do is going to be based on our palm nuts noodles. As we grow the business with them, actually the demand has picked up very, very nicely. It currently, it's about two cartons of our products that we're going to send to him on a weekly basis. 
What If's FMB clients are also paying more attention to the quality of ingredients and the supply chains. COVID-19 is a wake-up call. People were frantically going to supermarkets to, to get whatever they can off the shelf. It actually sort to me like, hey, what's happening in Singapore? I tell myself that we need to do something to be more self-sufficient. Wally Food, they're actually doing some of the healthier choice noodles and most importantly, it's actually in Singapore. Being a Singapore homegrown brand, we should be supporting the Singaporean brand. So that's why I decided to do a collaboration with them. Where we see ourselves one year from now, I guess that we are going to develop further our portfolio. For sure, we are going to bring more variants into our offering. And there is a huge need for us to pivot away from the animal protein side of things, not only because of the environment that is badly affected by it, but also uh, the health aspect of things. Because going into the health crisis, you know, kind of the consumers were a little bit more worried about their health rather than sustainability. So what we are actually seeing by talking to many, many consumers is this trend is here to stay. Oh, look, here it is. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. We are currently working to be displayed on retail shops as well, on retail shelves as well. So that is definitely a huge uh, target for us going forward. Going more into 2021, we are really looking into new regions and try to go beyond Singapore, trying to go into the neighboring states as well as beyond into Asian countries. New products, new opportunities, and keeping supply chains secure. Food for thought as companies move ahead in uncertain times.